I don't think I've, I don't think I've ever injured my low back too much. Well, no, I don't want to say that, but it's happened more times when I've been rounded compared to when I've been straight. So I think there probably is something to, for some people they have more flexion tolerance than other people. Have you but, ever seen any of uh, Greg Lehman's work? No, I've, I've never. I think I, I recognize the name. That's the dude. Really, Greg Lehman. Okay. The guy out. has. He went to chiropractic school, he went to PT school, and he, got, he has a master's in biomechanics now. Wow. Like, he's just done everything. And his obsession is low back, mechanics and pain. So I find that if I'm, like not, if I'm not having a good day in squat, I can still kind of grind out closer to what would be my normal, but on deadlift, just fucking forget about it. You know what I mean? But that's been part of it, is like just learning when I can go hard and when I can't. When, when I'm in pain versus potential risk for injury, and I think that's a lot of it. It's just like no one to push and no one back off. Before it was just like push, 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 push. You learn that's not the way you're really fast when you get hurt. Yeah. So I have two lower body days and two upper body days, essentially, is how it is. But we kind of mix together different stuff. Uh, today I'm just mashing stuff up because it's a crazy week. Like we're moving into our first office this Friday. And so, yeah, I'm just gonna mash some stuff together. Your first offices? First office, yeah. Congrats. Yeah. Do you know uh, Jordan Cello, the muscle dog? Yes. Mm -hmm. So he was saying when he was, I don't know if you were there for this, but when he was first starting out, he, he didn't have the opportunity to have an office. So the way that he compartmentalized was different chairs around his dining room table. He's like, this is the work chair. I do all my work here. When it's lunchtime, I go to this chair. I go back to the work chair. Dinner time, it's in this chair. So he would just like, that's how he would like turn on and off his work. That's funny. Take a picture of me. Take a picture of me. Take a picture. 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 So right now everything's back to hypertrophy based, like minimal strength training. I've still got to do some strength testing because we're doing a case study. Uh, and I have a two rep squat max and squat max in that. So I have to keep some squats in there. But uh, yeah, I'm over. That gives you enough time to like rest. And yeah, so you get back into it. Mine is in August, like last week in August. It's kind of soon. I would have yeah. rather have more time off, but yeah. a big need. Yeah, well you're still really fresh out of your meat, so you'll be taking it easy. <laughs> yeah, no, I really do. Let me see. I have really, really long. Now go side on here. Why are you good? Well, one of the reasons you're a good devil. I have your length arms and look how much taller I am than you. <laughs> like, silly. People don't understand that. They'll see tall people in the low wall. They, they can't be good squatters. It's like, well, not, not necessarily. Somebody's no, I just have a... Yeah, it depends on, it depends on your, your segment weights. That's what really matters, you know? So if you want to go here for bench press. 110. <laughs> That's bad. I struggle with bench Pound? press. Pound? See, you crush her on bench, see? <laughs> oh wait, hold on. I know she's from Australia, so I gave her, I gave her and Kilo. She's actually used you know, pounds except for her body weight. Yeah. So everything we do is in pounds except for taking her body weight. Yeah, someone tells me they weighed on like, why you take her? I'm like, fuck, what is that? <laughs> so now I'm like, when I weigh in, I'm weighing in, in kilos. So I'm like, I'm like, my face, I'm like, yeah, I'm 102 kilos. Everybody's like, what's that in pounds? <laughs> Yeah, you gotta get with it. Come on, get no, no, it's it's 100. percent It makes trick. completely way more sense than the standard English system. But we're American. We'll try the old English system from our cold, dead <laughs> fingers, along with our guns. Yeah. So you're going more towards your strong shoulder. You're dipping which, which way am I dipping? You're dipping this way. 
So this side is higher. So you're protecting it a little bit? Not consciously, but... Yes. No, no, I, I get it. Yeah. I get he it. has three rooms here, Cop Cares. Who? Yeah, oh. in, that, in this one. Three in this one and one in this one. Originally what started my series of injuries was a hip injury. I don't know if you ever read about that. That's what I was diagnosed with, but I don't think I had bursitis. Because when I read about bursitis, I had like two out of ten symptoms. I had hip pain, but, but it turns out, apparently bursitis is kind of a garbage can term from what I understand. Yeah, and there was a doctor who was all ready to like take my bursa out and cut like a diamond in my tendon and shit. And I, I went for a second opinion because I was kind of having doubts about it. And the guy's like, before we cut you open, how about we just put you through some physical therapy? And I, I got with a gal named Jamie Al Alhambra, and within two weeks she had me squatting again with, with, with minimal pain. It's a common diagnosis to make drug and drug bursitis, but it's gluten tendonitis diagnosed, or disguised as drug and drug bursitis. It's in all, there's so much shit going on in that area. Well, yeah, the glute meat attaches on the rim of the hip, right there. So she had me do glute, glute strengthening exercises? So that's good. Oh, it was 135. I could, I could do the negative with however much weight I wanted. And just if I like put it on the pins, it was fine. As soon as I tried to come back up, just like snapping yeah, pain. The same thing, right? You would wake up in the middle of the night but from the pain, was, right? Mine was bursitis. Like yeah. I had all so symptoms bursitis, of bursitis. So the reason I felt like it wasn't bursitis is they say when you warm up, bursitis actually feels better. Yeah. The more sets I did, the worse it got for me. That's why I felt like it was maybe a torn muscle or something yeah, like that. Muscle. I actually slowed myself down on my big lift a little bit because I find I get a little bit more out of it. I'm just in more control. Same with you too. Yeah, yeah. Stand up is like the, the ultimate thing. You know? It's like an eight second eccentric on the squats, you know? But the thing is, like, you're not going to get out of position doing that. I remember in one of my classes when we were covering compound movements, strength and conditioning. One of my professors said that squat, bench, and deadlift should be done slow. That those are slow movements that you can generate more power and more force if you move slower because you can activate more motor neurons. You can produce yeah, more power. I think it's. I think it also depends on the person too. You know, some people are. Obviously, it's sometimes it's hard to say. Like you can look at a. I put anybody on blast, but I'll watch the way Dan Green deadlifts, and I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'll not teach it like that, right? Yeah, but it works for him. But at the same time, you look and go, okay, but if you taught him how to do it, ideally, would he be better? Maybe, maybe not. Well, but you uh, can base the advice you're going to give someone on the 0.001%. Right, right, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Those so, are just freaks of nature. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, no limits. Like people trying to sell you an injury prevention plan. Yeah. There's no such thing. Yeah, There's exactly. injury management and that's about it. And then yeah. perfect biomechanics don't guarantee that you'll be pain free. That's, that's the other right. thing that people need to. My yeah. surgeon I tore this pack ten years ago at the muscle tendinous junction. And I said, how do I keep this from happening again? He said, don't get out of bed in the morning. <laughs> he's like, he's like, listen, he was the surgeon for the Chicago Bears. I was living in Illinois at the time. He was like, we had a guy tear his bicep just reaching out to catch a pass. He's, I was like, well, was it like cold? Or? He's like, we track temperature, wind, barometric pressure. He's like, there's nothing that we have found significant associations with. He's like, his words were, sometimes shit yeah. just breaks. Yeah. So that was a huge PR. Um, one thing that I'm gonna start doing different for my bench, I really wanna try to prioritize my bench more in the upcoming training blocks. Um, and I'm gonna be trying a few different things. Based on how my bench has been going and some of the some of the things that I can point out by myself are that I tend to lose tension control at the bottom of my bench press. So I'm gonna be taking out things like photo presses or even like board presses because even though they are great exercises and I think certain people can benefit from them, I just don't think that that's where my issue lies. My issue is more on the eccentric portion of the bench, lowering the bench down and then making sure that I can maintain the tension right at the bottom when my elbows pass my torso. I don't think people know how excruciating this is. It looks like nothing, yeah. but this is probably the most the thing I hate the most out of anything we do in the gym. And they learned it at West Side. It's like, the, imagine the worst shoulder pump you can have, but in a way bigger muscle group, and then it just stays with you for like 10 minutes after. God. <laughs> I'm sore everywhere. 
Speaking of loops, Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> what the fuck? No, it looks big. It's a Kuma. <laughs> no, it's not that it's so much big. It's just like fucking it's juicy. It looks like implants. That's just something that you would do as like a hypertrophy exercise for glutes, or is it a prehab style of exercise? Like, what are you doing this for? If I was going to into one of those categories, I think prehab, because the goal of that is stability yeah. under fatigue. Yeah. Um, but obviously, hypertrophy is like a secondary right. advantage. So you could to potentially it. put something like this in at the end of your lower body uh, program if you wanted to. Because it's much more effectively for prehab. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly what we do. Usually, it's like a finisher yeah. at the end of uh, like a squat day or even a deadlift day. Yeah, it makes sense. That's really, really challenging on my back. It's weird to walk after because like, your glutes don't work, right? <laughs> the guys on my gym have insane glutes. <laughs> mm. Brett is one of my favorite people in the industry because he's like, me and him, when we get together, just give us six hours because all we're going to do for, for the first three hours is rant about hating me in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Where it's like, I'm gonna fucking, no, that's fine, okay. I'm gonna fucking punch him in the face. <laughs> and, uh, and then, yeah, we just go off with the first time we ever trained together, we were in uh, UK in 2015, um, the uh, body power. And I'm squatting, and I'm doing my, and he's like, you create more intra abdominal pressure than anyone I've ever seen. I would love to end you. <laughs> and I'm like, Brett, I love when you talk good to me. <laughs> Yeah, so that's, that's that. I think people always try to, like that's what happens, you ever notice this when somebody gets injured? First thing is, they try to find anything, and it's like a justification for why it won't happen to them almost, you know what I mean? Like Branch Warren tore his quad getting out of his car, and they're like, oh, have you seen the way he trains? It's like, we didn't fucking tear in the gym, you know what I mean? Like, he totally slipped it out of his car, it could have happened to anybody. Oh, well, it's because he lifts so much weight. Well, maybe, yeah. like, you know, but it's just people trying to like, and then the, as a PT, for example, it's, it's the pressure for a diagnosis. Yeah. If I feel like you're coming to me, you're expecting an answer from me, a doctor level answer. And so some people just try to come up with whatever answers they can yes. get because they know that you're expecting a diagnosis. Yes. But you know what? I came to the conclusion that I'm okay with not being like that and saying, hey, I don't know, or hey, here are 10 possible causes. First mark like of an expert. Okay. It's one to say the magic words, I, I don't know. Don't know. That's Dude, so listen important. To this. So my first rotation uh, in graduate school, I had a clinical instructor that I asked him, I'm like, hey Jeff, hey Jeff, hey Jeff, I don't, sometimes people come with say shoulder pain and I don't know what it might be. Like, I think it could be this, I think it could be that, I think it could be this, that, the other. And you know, he told me, he's like, Steph, don't worry about it, just tell them whatever, give him an answer. And I'm like, dude, that's really, that's how you're gonna be treating people, just giving them whatever answer. I could see it if it was like, right. if you thought, for example, like if they were the kind of personality where they needed an answer and then you said, but, let me give you an example. So when I went to Jamie for my hip, she said, you know, I'm not sure what's causing the pain, but let's get you moving better and see if the pain resolves. That's great. And I was kind of like, okay. So we tried it and it worked, right? But maybe I was the type of person who like needed an answer and she, she could have said anything. She said, okay, I think it's this, but you know what, if we do X, Y, Z, you're gonna get better. That's a way better approach because the diagnosis yeah. matters very little. Because right. how you treat it is going to overlap so right. much between diagnoses and pathology. Because 50% of Americans, if you MRI them, have, have bulging something. and hurting at a disc and don't have pain. So, and yeah. It applies to other pathologies as well. It applies yeah. to the hip too. You, you see 37, I think 37 to 43% of individuals who get an MRI would have some sort of hip pathology, labor and tear or whatever. That's like when I hear de no degenerative disc disease. You mean Same old? Thing. Getting old? You mean or age? Being alive? Yeah. Yeah. Huh, yeah, it's it's, so. it's till, is, is that like telomere shortening disease? <laughs> like 